This is FAP200 RSD. This lock belongs to a resistance class 3. It should resist for at least 5 minutes when attacked by a thief equipped with a crowbar, screwdriver, hammer, mechanical drill and similar small tools. The thief has some knowledge of the lock and can use the tools effectively. This lock features two RBC pins designed to prevent dynamic attacks, two standard drivers and only a single spool. This hints on the threat profile as seen by its designers. The position of the RBC pins is not fixed and different locks will have them in different chambers. This configuration is shared throughout the higher security fab locks. The RSD version of the lock features the same shoulderless key and steel wire insert in the core as the FAP100 RS. It was supposed to be phased out by the introduction of the RSG version. It can be recognized by the notch in the middle of the spine of the key, also the front part of the key's spine is thinned and the key seems to have a sort of secondary profile on the nose. The core was modified too. The steel wire insert present in the RSD version is replaced by a steel insert embedded into the middle of the core, where it acts as a stop for the key. The wider part of the key's spine interacts with the insert. The insert is crimped to the core and is immovable. However, due to the secondary profile on the key's nose, it looks like it was meant to move. So far I haven't found any more information, so if you know the purpose of that profile, please chime in and let me know. There is also a movable wire insert that rides on the spine of the key, which pushes it up to a groove in the log bible. This groove doesn't have the same depth everywhere. The deepest section is on the top of the bible and gets shallower towards the pin chambers. That way, if the key doesn't have the notch, it will jam the core. These changes ensure that RS key blanks can't be used in RSG locks, although RSG key blanks are backwards compatible with RS locks. If an RS key blank is inserted to the RSG core, the key will be stopped halfway by the steel insert, because its spine part is not thinned. If the spine is ground off, then the notch and the wire insert come to play. Should a key without the notch be inserted, the core will rotate only a part way, then the insert will jam in its groove, because the depth of it lowers the closer to the pin chambers you get. The core also has a groove in it, which seems to correspond with the proclaimed protection against the core pulling. Gutting of the RSG version is a bit harder compared to the rest of the 200 family. The movable steel insert gets stuck a bit above the core, preventing core's removal. To free it, a small tap is needed to force it back into the core, and after that the core can be removed. Now you can see the core is blocked again because the wire insert is uh, sticking out of the core. Now to gut it, let's simulate the, the way I've done it before. So we're at 7 o'clock. I will hold the core in and tap. And as you can see, the core is free again. Also, a key can be modified to allow extraction of the core. All that is needed is to file the notch in the key's spine a bit deeper, so the wire insert can fully retract to the core. When this key is inserted, turning it towards the 180 degrees should allow core extraction, because the insert is pushed deep enough by the shallower groove near the pin chambers. Just be careful not to pull too hard, otherwise you might experience the high-speed gutting. Interestingly enough, FAPS marketing materials argue that the harder it is to assemble the lock, the harder it is to bypass it for thieves. I would say this claim is a bit disputable, but marketing materials usually are that way. Unfortunately, the locksmithing community didn't share this point of view, which in the end sealed the fate of the RSG version. The lock servicing was harder, and was more costly, due to the need to cut a special service key to allow disassembly of the lock. Also, the defective lock often had to be sent back to manufacturer for repair, so the community rejected it, and the RSB version is currently sold instead. The letter B means that the lock contains a beefed-up drill protection in the form of more steel driver pins, 
and also steel insert protecting the pin stack. Unfortunately, the groove in the core protecting against the core pulling was not retained. From the lock picking perspective, all the locks in the FAB200 family behave exactly the same. FAB200 family is also the first one security wise to offer a protection against unauthorized key copying. Locksmith cuts a key only when presented with a security card. What is worth mentioning, the code on the card directly represents the bitting of the key. Price-wise, the FAB200 is quite cheap at roughly 20 euro per double euro cylinder, offering very good cost to security ratio, provided the resistance class 3 is sufficient. Anyway, enough of theory and let's see the FAB200 RSD in action. This is FAB200. It's actually a modification with the R's nose. And thanks to the fact that it contains two RBC pins, which are sitting very low, it can be very nasty to pick. Also the precision is much better than the lower end of the fab locks. But it's still interesting that the RBC pins are pretty much the first ones to bind, usually. This particular lock has them in chamber 1 and chamber 5. And the one in chamber 5 is especially very nasty. Setting him is half of the opening of this lock. Also it's quite easy to not set it fully, so this might cause a lot of trouble. Okay, number four seems to be set, but still let's check the five. Number two, number three don't seem to bind, so it really seems to be the number five is okay. Click from him, doing problems yet again. Number two seems to be set. Hmm, and number three, I might have overset him. One, two, three. What's going on? Hmm. Seems to be overset, let's Try and drop him. Number two is springy. Number three. Hmm. Okay, we're open. It was number three. Holding us back. Hmm. We'll try to get rid of the C-clip. No. So let's lock it back up. It's much easier to 
Take it off. Let's make sure we don't let the drivers to fall into that groove there. Okay, the key pins should be here. Perfect. Here in this groove you can see the piece of wire that acts as a stop for the key. Okay, let's drop the key pins. One, two, three, four, five. doesn't seem to be very keen to come off. Hmm. Let's leave it in place. Here you can see the wire interacting with the, the thing in the nose. first RBC pin which is the sort of pin that's designed to mitigate the dynamic attacks here we can see the one and only spool number three is standard if I can only catch him Number four, standard yet again. Come on, little fella. And number five is the RBC pin again. Springs uh, are quite normal. Also quite long, which is usual in fab locks. The tolerances of this lock are way better than the lower models and with this kind of bidding especially this little fella it's quite fun to pick So let's arrange the 
pins for a final close up. Maybe one more thing, these RBC pins are designed in such a way that only the slim part enters the core. So usually the key pin sits quite low in the chamber, which means that if, let's say, a needle of a big gun is inserted into the keyway, which isn't all that bad here. Then the RBC pins are not in the contact with the needle, which makes it harder to use those dynamic attacks or so the bumping. On the other hand, the fact that usually these pins bind first may be used in such a way that you set them first and then use the pig gun. So let's do a close up. Here you can see the key pins are all standards. Chambers 1 and 5 contains the RBC pins. In chamber 2 there's our only and lonely spool. What's also interesting and quite characteristic for fab locks is that the uh, RBC pin in chamber 5 seems to be made of steel, which might act as a sort of anti rail protection, which is kind of interesting that they used the last chamber. Okay, so that's all for FAP 200 RS. Thanks and bye.